Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I'm Karshina with Verse Films Productions and you've made it back to another horror pick of the week. So let's go ahead and get this started. Thanks for joining in on our Screamtober all month long. This is a house where no one should live. Welcome to our Haunted House Horror Week. We start with this 1985 classic that was scary and popular enough to make a standalone sequel in 1987, almost back to back. The sequel even had its own Marvel comic. Yes, we're talking about House. Roger Cobb is an author who has just separated from his wife. He moves into a new house and tries to work on a novel based on his experiences in the Vietnam War. Strange things start happening around him, little things at first, but as they become more frequent, Cobb becomes aware that the house resents his presence. His beautiful neighbor Tanya, who likes to swim in his pool and who always catches him at the worst times. And the same goes with his nosy neighbor. I love these old 80s movies. They are so nostalgic and they bring back such fond memories of a simpler time being a kid watching scary movies on TV or trying to stay up past bedtime to watch them without your parents knowing. In the 80s, horror flicks were all the rage. Sequels were obligatory and every year saw another Freddy, Jason, Pinhead, or Michael Myers. Among these were the house movies, which are a lot better than the genre reputation suggests. Horror has found a new home. Some of the images from the film stick in my mind, like the monster thing in the closet, Roger crawling through the medicine chest mirror and repelling in the black void, and the image of Big Ben, Roger's zombie buddy from the army. And who can forget when the bullet rolls off the table and a monster stands up from nowhere? Sandy. Nope. Excellent comedy horror movie. One of the 80s best. Runtime of one hour and 33 minutes and it is rated R. I've never met a person who didn't love the house series. It's a comedy horror series like Evil Dead. <laughs> Even paying homage when he has to chop up his zombie ant and bury her. A dog digs up her foot and he chases it around. It's funny how the original trailer makes House look like a straight up horror movie when it really is just a horror comedy. You can check the trailer with full audio and comment down below to let me know if the trailer made it seem like it was a slasher movie. And the monsters are so ridiculous that they don't really scare. It sure makes for a welcome change in a decade full of blood, knifings, and slayings. When his son Jimmy mysteriously disappears, Roger's search for Jimmy destroys his marriage and his writing career. The sudden death of his aunt brings Roger back to the house where his nightmares began. Evil zombies in the house force Roger to endure a harrowing journey into his past. So many great one-liners like, it tricked me, I'll trick you too. And the tagline, ding dong, you're dead. I'm not afraid of you anymore, Ben. I beat you! For those who were wondering, the music at the beginning is from Pino Dinaggio's For Dressed to Kill. Stars William Cat, yes, from TV's The Greatest American Hero fame and The Prom Date from Carrie, believe it or not. See what I did there? George Went, yes, from TV show Cheers and the film Dreamscape. Richard Mall, yes, from the TV show Night Court. And Kay Lins from the film How the West Was Won and a string of TV series like Touched by an Angel to House the Medical Show, which I find that very ironic. Mindy Sterling from the Austin Powers movie, Frau Forbissena fame. The real estate agent in the beginning of the movie is the same hotel manager from another 80s horror classic Michael Ensign, yes, you got it, the Ghostbusters. Steve Williams, best known for the X-Files and 21 Jump Street, yes, he plays the cop in almost everything. You had a Swedish model, James Bond girl, a Jaws movie cameo actress, and many more. This was an 80s comedy dream team, directed by Steve Miner, who also directed Friday the 13th Part 2 and 3, Warlock, Lake Placid, Halloween H2O, and the 2008 remake of The Day of the Dead. This film had nothing but golden opportunities for the horror genre to be a classic. Currently streaming on Tubi TV, both House and House 2. Here's some movie trivia that you may or may not have known. The rotting hand in the movie poster never appears in the movie. It took eight weeks for shooting the film. However, the special effects and creature puppets took longer than the shoot of the movie. The stunt coordinator for the film was Kane Hodder, and yes, the very same Kane, 
Lane, who was Jason Voorhees throughout the original Friday the 13th franchise and some of the many sequels. Yes, Jason X in space, I'm looking at you. Kane also played Leatherface in Texas Chainsaw Massacre, playing the stunts. House 3 came out in 1989, which was another standalone film that had nothing to do with the original, and it was darker than the others before it. It even changed its name to The Horror Show, but kept the name House 3 for the European audiences. House 4 was released in 1994 and connected back to the original movie, even so much as bringing back William Cat. The Asian market, specifically Hong Kong, released the movie with a ridiculously long title called don't go into the haunted mansion after midnight like for real i don't think the distributors actually watched the film because the monsters and scary happenings were round the clock scenes of the movie were clearly in the daytime when roger cobb was trying to defeat the house lastly house is spielberg movie adjacent as it was heavily influenced by the twilight zone the movie that was an anthology of horror directed by spielberg however the writer fred decker couldn't get it out so he wrote house instead and like i mentioned earlier one of the faces in this movie played in jaws so Spielberg nod was a nice touch. Go check out House and the House franchise and let me know if you can trick or treat from house door to house door. Tell me how it went. Ding dong. House. Enter at your own risk.